Welcome to PowerSource. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 tips and tricks to get you started with ETAP. These tips can definitely boost your productivity and shorten your learning time. So let's get started. The first tip that I would like to discuss with you today is the name of the toolbars. If you are new to ETAP, the menus and the toolbars can be a little intimidating. But with this tip and trick, you don't need to memorize the toolbars names. Simply look for these dots located at the end of each menu. Hover your cursor over it. The cursor will turn to four ways arrows. Now you can drag the menu and place it on your one line view. At this point, you can simply read the name right off this banner. Once you do so, you can double click on the banner and it will go back to its original place. Let's say I grab this menu here. This is the three dimensional database toolbar and then I accidentally closed it. You can bring it back by going to the main menu, go to view, and then you can check the toolbar here. Double click on it and it will go back to its original place. Some toolbars are hidden and you may not see them right away if you close them. For example, if I'm working on a different mode such as load flow and if I'm performing this studies and I grabbed this bar and then accidentally close that, you can always come back to view and then go down to mode toolbars and this one here, load flow toolbar. Okay. The second tip that we can talk about today is help associated with ETAP and how can you obtain help. In fact, ETAP is equipped with great help features that you can take advantage of. These help features can get you up to speed and shorten your learning time. In this segment, I'll discuss with you five different ways to get help while you're working with ETAP. The first one is the helpline. The helpline is located down here at the bottom of your screen along your zoom level and the current revision used. If the helpline is not shown at the bottom of your screen, you can always go to view and then go down and make sure that helpline is checked. Okay, and now you have it. Notice the helpline is showing the coordination of my mouse and the current zoom level on your one line view. But the main purpose of the helpline is to provide you with a long text description for all entry fields needed. For example, if I open this transformer and I click, let's say here, on the component ID, it's telling me this is the transformer ID, which is unique name up to 25 characters. Similarly, if I go to the rating tab and I click, let's say on the power rating, it's telling me this is the primary winding rating in MVA or KVA. You can always click on the entry box and then the helpline will give you some text related to the information needed for that entry. In addition, you can identify items using the helpline by hovering over an icon and the helpline will give you the information related to that icon, okay? Another important place to get help is the help search. Basically, go to the main menu, help, help search, and this will open the online help search. Basically, the right-hand side here is organized by topics, and each topic contains the appropriate chapters, or you can come to the contents and search for chapters. You can open each chapter and go through the sections, and this is kind of similar to the eTab uh, user manual. Otherwise, you can come to this search tab and search by a word or a phrase. You can also use a quotation mark for an exact phrase. In addition, you can come here for tutorials. If you click on this, it will bring some tutorials, ETAP basic, merging ETAP project, and so forth. So use these tutorials when you can. One of the greatest place you can find help is the editor. For example, you can open the editor associated with a component like this transformer. And then at the end here, you will see this red question mark. If you click on this question mark, it will open the help file on the appropriate section related to the tab you are on. And for example, if I close this again and go to the impedance tab and click on that question mark, it will take me straight to the impedance page on the two winding transformer. Now we can read through here and it will give you the necessary information or the important information you need to fill all of these entries. Okay. Also another good place for tutorials is to go to the help menu and then click on technical tutorials and that will take you to the ETAP website where you can find a lot of great technical tutorial provided by ETAP. But since we are here, I also wanted to point out to the keyboard shortcut 
and this one looks a little bit easier and nicer than the one we looked at from the help file you can use this and I will walk you through some of the shortcut in the next step the third tip and trick I would like to share with you today is related to shortcuts shortcuts can help us to gain some speed and gain some proficiency when we are operating or working with a large network or a one-line diagram and basically in e tab you don't have to press the control button when you are using shortcuts for example you don't have to press the control c control v to copy and paste you simply can press c then v to copy and then paste right so let me share with you the shortcuts that i frequently use and we can start with the letter a the letter a is easy simply the letter a will select all if you press the letter a it will select all the elements on your one line diagram uh, you can move them around, you can copy them and paste them, or you can select them all and then delete them, okay? The next one here is the letter B. The letter B is easy, so you can just press the letter B to bring this text box where I can add some notes to my one-line diagram, okay? Okay, now let me take the three letters, the letter C, the letter D, and V to explain the concept of copy, the dumpster, and the uh, paste, respectively. The system dumpster contains all the elements deleted or copied from your one-line diagram. So if you press the letter D, you bring the dumpster screen right here. Uh, let's say our one-line diagram contains a wind turbine. We'll put the wind turbine right here on our one-line diagram. Component IDs in ETAB are unique. So when you copy an element from your one-line view, you are going to copy that element to the dumpster with the component ID WTG2, okay? And then when you wanna paste it back to your one line view, it will be pasted back with its unique ID that is WTG3, okay? The next two letters of uh, shortcuts I would like to explain is the letter G and the letter U for grouping elements or ungrouping elements. For example, if I have a need to copy this bus and the downstream loads, I can select them like that press C, come on my one line diagram, press V, and you can see here, I can move them around as a group. To get rid of this grouping feature, you can just simply right click, and then you can ungroup them in here. This way you would have the ability to just move individual component if needed. So remember the letter G and the letter U for grouping and ungrouping respectively. The next shortcut is the letter T. Uh, the letter T is for toggling. You can use that with protective devices or switches. Uh, basically, you can toggle uh, the status between open or close, or you can toggle the position between two positions. So to illustrate this point, I put some equipment here. For example, uh, these breakers are in an open position. And then if you highlight the equipment of interest and then press the letter T, uh, basically you can toggle uh, the status between open or close. And similarly, I can do that with a fuse. If you toggle or press the letter T, you can toggle status here from open to close. Similarly, this uh, ground switch can be toggled between open and close status. This one here is a single throw uh, switch, can go to open and close. And for a double throw switch, you can either be in a position A or a position B. So instead of open and close, they can, they can alternate between the positions. So this one here can go between the position A and the position B, as you can see. So basically protective devices, switches can benefit from this shortcut. All right, the fourth tip and trick I will share with you today is related to the system dumpster. The system dumpster contains all the element deleted or copied from your one line diagram. When you cut an element or group of elements from your one line diagram, ETAB places them into the dumpster. And that is because the dumpster provides a convenient holding location for elements where you are actively constructing your one-line diagram. To illustrate, let me show you right now, the dumpster does not contain any components. Here's the dumpster, the cells are empty. And I'm going to place an element on the one-line diagram. The component ID associated with this element right now is panel one. Okay, if I copy this element, control C or just simply C, okay, and then open up the dumpster, 
you will see here that the component ID is panel two. So basically the dumpster is a holding place for copying component. Now, if I go back on my one line diagram and control V or simply V, the component will be panel three. The reason for this is components in ETAB must have a unique ID. Whether they reside in the one line diagram view or they reside in the dumpster, they must have their own IDs. Now we can delete all of my panels, simply select all of them and press delete and they will be deleted in the dumpster. Now let me open the dumpster and show you that the dumpster contains two cells. The first one here is panel two and the ID for the cell number two is called sub one line one, okay? The component ID here is an actual ID because this is a single component. If you delete more than one component from your one line diagram, the ID will be listed as a sub one line. Now we can purge the dumpster and you can do so by going to edit and purge all and that will clear the IDs and these IDs can be used later on, okay? Now we understand the concept of copy and paste. We saw that when we copied an element from the one line diagram, that element did reside in the system dumpster with a new ID, right? Now the question is, what happened if we use the cut or the delete command instead of a copy? Well, let's examine that together. Let's take a wind turbine generator and place it on the one line diagram. This is the first time we're placing that element, so the ID is WTG1. If I take that and press delete, and that element in the dumpster would retain its ID because what we did here, we just moved it from the one line diagram to the dumpster and therefore the ID is retained. Now, what if I wanna take that ID and use it? Well, you can do that. I can move it from the dumpster by highlighting the element and then um, come back on the one line diagram and then right click and then move from the dumpster. Now I can retain the ID. With that, we can move down to the next tip and trick, and that is the component IDs. The fifth tip we can talk about today is related to component ID. Basically, every element in ETAB requires a unique ID. When you add new elements, the new manager automatically assign an ID to it by appending a number to the default ID. And what are the default IDs for my element? Basically, you can find the default IDs by going to defaults. Then let's say we are looking for motors. You can see here, I can go to motor, induction motors, and the default ID for induction machines, AKA motors is MTR, okay? Now, as I stated, ETAP assigns the IDs by taking that component ID and then appends a number to it. If you have a need to change the component ID to something that meets your needs, simply come here and change this component ID to something you like. However, keep in mind, you will be limited to 25 characters, okay? Tip number six, system manager. The system manager is this portion here of your ETAP interface. If the system manager is not showing, then just click on this folder here under the system toolbar and uh, you can hide or show the system manager from here. Now we have the system manager showing. The system manager contains several folders. The first folder right here contains the one line components. The, the folders correspond to the right hand side devices uh, listed on the right here. Uh, for example, this folder here uh, shows the batteries. And we know that this project right here does not contain any batteries. Therefore, there is no battery listed. And the sum total for the batteries is shown to be zero. On the other hand, this project contained three buses. And if we click here to expand, we see that uh, the total number of buses are three. These are bus one, bus two, and bus three. When you double click on the bus under the system manager, it would be highlighted in red in your one line view. You can also change the default settings of the buses simply by going to default, right click, and then go to properties, and you can change the default settings from here the active view right now is olv1 our project contains two views or two presentations 
So I can uh, right click here and then find bus one on a particular presentation or view. Then I can find it in one line view, da 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 da, that is. And then it's gonna list all the presentation <clears throat> associated with your project. Okay. The second portion here, it contains the multidimensional database. This right here would be the name of your project. And then from here, you can have access to configurations, presentations, and study cases. In a summary, you can come here and see that uh, we have two status configurations, one called normal and the other one T1 out of service. Similarly, you can see the number of presentations in here and the number of presentation correspond to the one-line diagram views. This is how many ways we can view our project one-line diagram. The first one was uh, OLV1, the second one was OLV2. These two views represent the same project, okay? <clears throat> and for the study case, basically, um, you come here, you expand this, and these right here are the study case editor and for example if i'm looking at a load flow i can expand this and double click on this here it will open up the the load flow study case editor finally in here you can see the rules and the libraries associated with this project uh, if you expand this here it's going to give you the location and the list of components that contains in the in the project library and similarly this is are the rules and this is the warehouse okay these, some of this information associated with the system manager can be further explained, but uh, they will probably need their own module. So for now, for the tip and trick, I just wanted to introduce you to what's in here, okay? Tip number seven, auto select. ETAP provides you with an intelligent selection feature called auto select that can be used with buses or loads. For example, you can use this feature on a bus. Simply press and hold the Alt key, then go to the bus of interest, and then left click on the bus, it will select all components connected to that bus, including the protective devices. Okay, you can use this feature with loads. Simply press and hold the Alt key, go to a load, left click on it, and basically it will select all devices connected to the load up to the bus. Okay, you can use the uh, page up and page down keys to jump from the selected element to the upstream or downstream buses. So you can come here and just simply press page up. It will select and highlight all elements from this point to the upstream bus. If I uh, click on it again, I can go one level up. Okay. Tip number eight, working with themes. Well, if you want to make some adjustment to the appearance of your one line view, or customize the one-line diagram elements color, annotation color, grid size, or adjust the decluttering zoom option, then you will have to work with the theme manager. The theme manager can be accessed from the theme toolbar. The theme toolbar is located up here. The one-line view is based on this example default. You can change that to contrast black. You can go back to the ETAB default or you can use something else, like in my case here, I'm using the example default, which allows me to make some changes to the default settings, okay? Now let's launch the theme editor. So the tip and trick here is the way we can declutter the one-line diagram. This box right here is telling us that your one-line view consists of several layers, uh, one of which is the background, the grid, the GIS elements, the legends, and so forth. You can show or hide these layers on your one-line diagram if that would just ease the readability of your one-line diagram. In some cases, if I want to show or hide the one-line view grid, you can do that also from here. That line is telling you the one-line diagram will be showing if your zoom level at 17 or up and if it is 17 or up, it will be shown as a percentage of the transparency. Zero means it's solid and then 100% it's absolutely clear. Now, if I want to check what zoom level I'm displaying currently on my one line view, I can do that by uh, coming here and just looking at the helpline contains the zoom level, which right now is showing to be 25, okay? Let's examine that theory. Right now we said that the zoom level is 25. We can zoom out. 
18, 17, and as you can see at zoom level of 17 or higher, the grid level is still showing. If I go down one to 16, the grid level is no longer showing, okay? Now I can take this concept and apply it on these two windows. I can show or hide some component at a specific level. So for example, I can take uh, protective devices out of this equation, transformers. If I have some relays or CTs or PTs, I can hide them from here and then press apply. And then the one line diagram is a bit simplified if that's what I want to see. We also can look at um, zooming in and out at an early stage. So instead of waiting till 17, I can declutter early. Let's see if I can declutter at 23 and it's still showing some of the elements. I'm at zoom level 26, okay? So we can go down a little bit and here's 24, 23, and then below 23, I decluttered my one line diagram. Well, still I have enough uh, zoom level uh, that I can read my one line diagram from, okay? So as you can see, I can declutter my one line diagram while I still have enough zoom level to show the buses and some of the interconnections. And that's how can you use the theme manager, okay? Tip number nine, auto build. Auto build can provide you with a quick and consistent way to build your one line diagram that can make your one line diagram more appealing and easier to read. And that is because it uses a rule book that dictate the spacing between elements and also can be used for voltage propagation. And we have to activate the auto build or enable the auto build from here. Once you get it activated, you can graphically build your one line diagram here by placing elements into the one line view, okay? But before I do so, I wanted to make sure that you and I have a good understanding of the rule book. So let's start with opening the rule book. The rule book consists of three tabs. One of them is information. The second one is spacing and voltages, okay? Let's, um, the spacing one provides you the rules about the spacing between elements. So right here, it's telling me if you have a node and a branch, the distance between these two is about three units of length. Similarly, if I have a bus and I have a source, the distance between these two is going to be nine. So what is this nine or these units means? These units are corresponding to the grid size. The grid size can be determined from the theme toolbar. So let's just go quickly there. We'll close this one. I'll go to the theme toolbar and then launch the theme editor. And from here, I go to three phase and then see what's the size of my grid. The size of my grid is nine units. So that means my squares are nine by nine units of length. Okay. So if I take that and look at the auto built rules and I check the distance between a bus and a source, it's a nine, which equate to one square. So let's place a grid. We place a bus and as you can see here the distance from the end of the grid to the bus is about one square or nine units of length okay now the next uh, thing i would recommend looking at is these distances uh, you need to determine what is the space between two buses also here is the connector to the bus edge uh, so i choose one square and the distance between two adjacent connectors would be for me uh, 18, which equate to two squares, okay? Now let's build the one line diagram and then uh, we'll go from here. So we have the bus, we activated the bus and just you can basically uh, put a breaker, put a transformer, another breaker, a bus, and then let's add motors. Um, so this would be one, two, three, four. And as you can see the philosophy in auto build is chosen to go from top to bottom, left to right, okay? And at this point, I can use the alignment here, click on the grid and push this here, and it will center my grid to the bus, okay? So that's another way to uh, look at auto build to make your one line diagram statically pleasing and also a 3D can exhibit the way you built your one line diagram, okay? 
And with that, we can move to tip number 10. And here we are, tip number 10, the display option. Well, the display options related to the edit mode is located right here. That would give us the ability to change the annotation and some of the information displayed on my one line diagram. So if I click on the display option right now, the display option is related to the edit mode and the display option is actually changing according to the mode of study. So if you are in edit mode, the display option is different than the load flow, short circuit and so forth. Okay. So to show you some example on the edit mode, let's open the display option and we can see here, this is the AC element list. You can display the component ID, the rating, the kilovolt, the amperage, the connections, the impedance, and the data block. Okay, you can go down a little bit. So let's start with a circuit breaker. And as you can see, you can display the ID, the rating, the KV, the amperage, but don't forget about this here. This section here contains the circuit breaker fuse and switches. You can always display the off normal status, that is the open. So uh, the default setting for a circuit breaker normally is closed. And if you want to display breakers with an open position, you can just check this box. Also, don't forget if you want to display equipment cables, you have to check this box. And an equipment cable is a cable attached to equipment such as a motor. I have displayed the equipment cable associated with these motors. These cables can be located in the load editor. So you can come here and look for this uh, cable uh, slash voltage drop. This way you can pick the cable from here. And these cables are picked from the equipment editor such as here, okay? Also the colors and the fonts of your annotation can be changed. Just come to the color tab and then go to the theme and then you can go to the font and then you can here, you can change the colors of your annotation. You can change the size and the font, okay? Um, finally, if you are working with a mode of study, such as load flow, just keep in mind that uh, the display option is different, where you can display results in different units, and you can choose different options here. So keep in mind when you are working with the display option, it changes depending on the mode of study. Okay, all right. So with that, I'm excited to tell you we have reached the end of this 10 tips and tricks. I enjoyed talking to you about this. I hope you like it and good luck.